Hello, my name is Gary Cleveland with Cleveland Helicopter Services in Plymouth, Indiana. And in this video, I will discuss effective translational lift. In order to understand effective translational lift, you must also understand the airfoil, cord line, relative wind, angle of incidence, angle of attack, and induced flow. Now, effective translational lift is in simple terms, the rotor system getting into clean air. And that may be good enough for uh, most examiners for a private pilot check ride. But sometimes, almost most of the time, as I'm training somebody, they just want to understand it just a little bit more. So I came up with a way of drawing a picture that is by no means not to scale, and I am not an artist but it may help you to understand what effective translational lift is and why the helicopter performs better in clean air. So first I will draw a rotor blade. This is a symmetrical rotor blade because the upper camber, the lower camber, are the same shape. The cord line is an imaginary line straight through the center of the rotor blade. I would draw a line here to signify the plane of rotation. The plane of rotation would simply be the, uh, the rotor head. If you were to put a level on the rotor head in the hangar and call that the plane of rotation, if the helicopter is sitting level on the skids. This angle from the cord line to the plane of rotation is called the mechanical angle or it is also called the angle of incidence. This angle can be observed by simply going to a helicopter in the hangar that's not running and pull up on the collective the pitch between the cord line and the plane of rotation would be that mechanical angle or the angle of incidence. So now we have to discuss relative wind. So let's say in a hover, relative wind is coming in at this angle right here. And again, I'm not an artist, and this is an imaginary scenario to show you what happens. Relative wind is coming in at this angle. So in order to know what angle of attack is, you must know that the angle of attack is the angle between the relative wind and the cord line. That makes this your angle of attack. That makes the rest of this induced flow. Your lift comes from angle of attack. As you proceed in forward flight from a hover, the relative wind will change. This is easy to understand. If you imagine in a hover, the air is coming down from an angle that is more above. As you proceed down the runway into forward flight, this relative wind is starting to come in at a different angle. So again, let's imagine these angles because we don't have a way to portray them exactly. Let's say that this represents the relative wind in a hover. You have a large angle of incidence or mechanical angle, and you have a very small angle of attack. So the helicopter is working very hard to maintain flight. As you proceed forward, 
and without changing the angle of incidence or the mechanical angle. In other words, leaving the hover power or the collective alone and just start proceeding forward until you reach ETL, effective translational lift, the helicopter will then climb. So let's put another angle in here that represents the relative wind in forward flight as you reach 1624. ETL, 16 to 24 knots, according to the Helicopter Flying Handbook. So to recap this, you're in a hover with a very small angle of attack because the relative wind is coming in at a steeper angle. You proceed forward by pushing forward on the cyclic. The helicopter will have a slight shutter. The entire rotor system becomes clean at approximately 16 to 24 knots. That's called effective translational lift. All that is, is the relative wind coming in at a different angle, giving you a larger angle of attack for the exact same mechanical angle or angle of incidence. That's when the pilot will have to push forward on the cyclic to keep the aircraft from climbing. And we will talk about the height velocity diagram in another video. I hope this helps. Have a great day.